From 1990 to 1991, TV viewers were obsessed with the tantalizing question, who killed Laura Palmer? That was the central mystery on Twin Peaks, a stylish, bizarre murder mystery set in the Pacific Northwest. Now that the show's long-awaited third season has returned 26 years later, let's step into the Red Room, pour a cup of damn fine coffee, and have a look into the seedy underbelly of Twin Peaks. Inspired by Marilyn Monroe. In the late 80s, Warner Brothers asked David Lynch to direct a biopic based on Goddess, a 1985 biography of Marilyn Monroe. Lynch teamed up with Mark Frost to write the screenplay, but the studio pulled out for what Lynch called political reasons. Specifically, he and Frost believed the conspiracy theory that Monroe was murdered because of her relationship with the Kennedys. Lynch and Frost so liked working together that they began collaborating on a TV series that would become Twin Peaks. The idea that Monroe's death was not quite what it seemed factored into what ultimately became Laura Palmer's fate on Twin Peaks. Still, David Lynch wouldn't let the whole Monroe thing go. What really went on between Marilyn Monroe and the Kennedys? And who really pulled the trigger on JFK? Population, whatever. In the opening credits of Twin Peaks, the fictional town is said to have a population of 51,201. Creators Lynch and Frost wanted the town to be even smaller with a population of 5,120, but ABC thought that people wouldn't tune into a show about a tiny rural town. The producers made them add an extra digit and multiply the population tenfold, even though the area kept its very small town vibe. Later, Lynch and Frost got around ABC's order to change the population. Population. In the 1991 tie-in book Twin Peaks Access Guide to the Town, they wrote that Twin Peaks recently discovered our population is not 51,201. The 1990 census revealed our present population is 5,120.1, not 51,201. That point one person wasn't officially revealed, but we all know it's probably the baby from a race ahead. The Origin of Bob Spoilers, the guy behind Twin Peaks' murders was Bob, an evil monster that possesses people and makes them do horrible things. Except when Twin Peaks was originally scripted, Bob wasn't even a character. In fact, David Lynch never even wanted to reveal who killed Laura Palmer at all. Of course, a murder that goes unsolved for years didn't sit well with ABC executives, who urged Lynch and Frost to identify the murderer at the end of the first season, which they didn't do. They even went one further and slapped another potential murder or two on top. The writers even sent the network a fake finale script to indicate that they were playing along. The unsolved murder of Laura Palmer, along with the show's huge ratings, ensured a season two renewal, and even more pressure from ABC to say who killed her. Enter Frank Silva, the Twin Peaks set dresser. While shooting a scene for the pilot, Silva was putting finishing touches on a room when Lynch realized that if he were to shoot the scene at that moment, Silva would appear in the frame. Silva recalled in a 1993 interview, and suddenly he said, wait a minute, Frank, get down to the base of the bed, crouch down, look through those wrought iron bars and act scared, and it just sort of snowballed from there. Later, in a completely fortunate accident, Silver can be spotted in a mirror during the pilot, cementing his place in the series and essentially revealing the series' murderer in the pilot episode. You know, if you had a DVR back in 1991. Cooper and Horn. The first season of the show featured a budding romance between visiting investigator Agent Dale Cooper, played by Kyle McLaughlin, and Audrey Horn, played by Sherilyn Finn. But then the plot thread was abruptly dropped. Reportedly, McLaughlin asked Lynch to break them up because he didn't think a straight-laced older guy like Cooper would date a high school student. But Fenn told the AV club that the real reason was on-set tension. At the time, McLaughlin was dating cast member Lara Flynn Boyle, and she and Fenn did not get along. Boyle apparently resented the screen time that Fenn was getting as the romantic interest of the show's main character. In order to keep the peace, hearts had to be broken. The Truth of Mr. Tojimura in the first season finale of Twin Peaks, Leo, acting at the behest of Ben Horn, sets fire to Catherine Martell's Packard sawmill, and Catherine, played by Piper Laurie, is believed to have died in the blaze. 
In truth, Catherine survives, but under the guise of a Japanese businessman named Mr. Tojomura. The writers didn't want anyone, including the cast and crew, to know what was going on. So Piper Laurie's name was taken out of the credits, but she still showed up on set each day completely ready to play Mr. Tojomura, wearing a suit and several layers of prosthetics and makeup. As Laurie relates in her memoir, Learning to Live Out Loud, cast and crew were told that this person was a legendary Japanese actor named Fumio Yamaguchi, and that he didn't speak English. Cast member Peggy Lipton still thought something was up, and assumed that the Japanese actor wandering silently around the set was actually a disguised Isabella Rossellini, who had dated David Lynch around the time Twin Peaks was in production, and is no stranger to weird costumes. The Log Lady one of the quirkiest characters on Twin Peaks was the Log Lady, portrayed by Katherine Coulson. Surprisingly, David Lynch came up with the Log Lady in the late 70s, years before he co-created Twin Peaks, while on the set of his cult classic Eraserhead, where Coulson was an assistant director. Seeing Coulson in her glasses during a late night shoot and with wood apparently on his mind, Lynch told Coulson that he wanted to make a TV series starring her someday called I'll Test My Log With Every Branch Of Knowledge. According to Lynch, the idea was that Catherine would go with the log to various experts, a dentist, a doctor, a physicist, and they would talk only to the log and we would learn that information as an audience. While that never happened, the log lady was brought to life in a slightly different form for Twin Peaks. Audrey Horn's spin-off. After the show had been on the air for a while, Cheryl Lynn Fenn's Audrey Horn emerged as a fan favorite, so Lynch and Frost proposed a Twin Peaks spin-off feature film to Fenn centered around her character moving to California. According to Fenn, they talked about an opening scene of her driving along Mulholland Drive and how she's a little bit older. Whatever it was going to be, it never ended up happening for me. It didn't happen for her, but the idea of a young woman getting into bizarre adventures in Southern California is pretty much the plot of Lynch's 2001 movie Mulholland Drive, which is no coincidence. Other revivals. The last episode of the original run of Twin Peaks features some kind of spectral Laura Palmer telling Agent Cooper that you'll see him again in 25 years. Now, 26 years later, and after some production delays, the show has returned. But that's not a long time to wait in the grand scheme of botched Twin Peaks continuation attempts. In 1993, cable network Bravo secured the rights to air reruns of the show and persuaded David Lynch to write and direct new introductions to the episodes. As a potential part of a deluxe DVD release of the full series in 2007, Twin Peaks story editor Bob Engels teamed up with comic artist Matt Haley to create a canonical third season of the show in graphic novel format, based on the original notes for the show's cancelled third season. Among the plot points, Dale Cooper moves to Twin Peaks to work as the town pharmacist, and Bob may or may not have been from a planet made of creamed corn. The graphic novel was ultimately never finished because David Lynch refused to sign off on it. And after hearing about Planet Corn, maybe that's for the best. Thanks for watching. Click the looper icon to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Plus, check out all this cool stuff we know you'll love too.